which he was still got me application. Um, my name is John Luke. Uh, today we'll just be going through a brief summary of the of the game and kind of the background, and I'll be doing a tutorial of the game. Uh, first, we'll start with the open play. Well, I'm gonna talk to me. Okay, I'm gonna be pushing you out. You up? Yeah, he be uh, here. He watched a chit chat below. Say good morning, relatives. Welcome to uh, this presentation of the Unchi uh, We Choya game. The games, the games. So welcome. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, you don't know how lucky you are. That's about to change. <laughs> my name is uh, Gus Yellowhair, uh, employee of Thunder Valley. Lakota We Choya for life. We should have to get a Hini watched a chichap of Viha, who Sunday at Nana Bay Chu's Papa. Bakota Chajemi talk in Hashuke Naji Macha. Nice was she took the warm gas yellow hair, heavy air. Nice Keneche Malakota and Hunke Shahila and Macha. He's got a Wazia Otuma head, Oyanke hair, Imata. So, relatives, I want to say good morning to you, each and every one of you. I'm from the Pine Ridge Reservation there. Join me in this prayer. There's so much to be thankful for, uh, there's so much to pray for. And our relatives back home, the ones that are having a difficult time, you can keep them in your good thoughts and prayers this morning. The ones that are in the hospital, the ones that many, many going through the, uh, the uh, uh, through the mourning process. We lost so much relatives in the last uh, last year and a half or so, like that. Relatives, there's still a lot of people that are sick. Yeah. See that back there, or do you need to dim the lights? Okay. Anybody close back there can hit the lights?
Start off, we'll just uh, start off with our home world. Um, when you click into our, our home, this is where the, the kids will, we want to go and have them collect a bunch of items um, and learn a bunch of new words. But at, and the whole basis of the game is they, they, they go in and earn kind of like a uh, feathers throughout the game and in our mini applications and they can go into our store and find them. This is kind of just our own, their own personal place to put their own personal items that they'll collect. Um, next is up is Gucci's, uh, Gucci's house. This is kind of the main point of, of, of the, whole, the whole game is that the kids will go in and the more um, items and Words they start accumulating, they'll unlock stories that Mushi will tell them. Um, they can come in here and they'll be able to click on many stories. We have one that's kind of working right now, which the audio is working. But the um, Mushi will go in and, and She'll just go in and we have like many stories that we want to tell our, our children that involve our reporter story. And so we wanted to place um, stories in here with significance to us and us with the um, And so that's just the, the, the main plot of everything is trying to get our culture to our youth outside of school in, in their entertainment time, like when they start playing games and stuff. That was the whole main idea behind the game, just trying to get our kids to learn Lakota um, differently by building a game that they, they would love to play. And this is our, our main uh, store, and so they would go through and I kind of cheated, and I have a thousand, thousand feathers, so let's go in and buy, because a lot of people didn't, said they, they didn't know what to do when they bought items. So. So we'll just click on various items throughout the store. We wanted to build a lot of um, different items so they can decorate and kind of build their own little world inside the game. Um, rugs, uh, dolls, um, hanging up items. Um, we wanted to put in a lot of um, Lakota kind of themed items too. Um, so we're actually adding to the store a lot. 
and it would just randomly um, generate and pump up. And then after you purchase your items, you can go, um, we built a menu where you can just click right into your home world, so you can just kind of um, slap them in. You just click on your backpack, and it opens up all the items that you purchased. You kind of just drag them in, just set them into your world. And just, the kids kind of like this whole kind of Minecraft thing where they can personalize their, their, their own space and kind of build their own world. And that's the main point of our, the, the buying point of the whole game is to keep them coming back because they can personalize their game for them. Um, and most of the three kind of personal places now we can kind of get to a little bit of the mini games. Um, one of my favorite is um, the arrow game. We're introducing like animals to our to the children. So they come in, in here to just kind of like the morning game. And so they'll just go in here and kind of and they'll ask, you know, random character to go um, and they select wrong, you know, it won't. And it gives them the wrong response. We don't want it to be too hard on the children because it's kind of like a mad mode. So we're just kind of keep it really, really nice. Let's see if I can uh, select the right one. And so every time they hit the correct one, it kind of builds up with this little feather here. And that's how they accumulate their feathers over here. And it kind of gives them a way to earn and give them a reward every time they choose the right character. And the audio is for this um, not finished yet. And this is like it's a beta version. We, we're releasing to the beta version because we know it's, it's getting close to getting completed. But we'd like to keep that on the little bugs that are throughout. And we're going to keep this open up for, for about a month. So you, everybody can play this and kind of give us feedback of what they like, what many games they don't like. This is just uh, one of the many games we also have a plethora of other. We have some, uh, this is called the food game, I like to call it. Uchi. My Uchi always, when, when I think about Uchi stuff, she always cook for her relatives that would come over. And so this kind of was inspired by that. And so the kids would come in here and select kind of, you know, what they wanted to eat, different items. So kids will just be asked to select the right, right one, and if it's not, it won't award them. And it's kind of the same thing. If they select the right one, it will reward them with you know half of a feather. We want them to go in and look to learn new work. Um, so we wanted to go in and kind of show you each 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 game and kind of give you a big overview. This one was meant for um, four or five year olds. It's not a, a rewarding game. We were thinking we wanted to, you know, um, give them kind of a, a phase of they would know they're going to have air. And so when they click on the little spots, we live on Wakala. Sapa mu oti. So this is more of an informational kind of application where the kids can just go in and kind of click on the area. And it kind of teaches them, you know, where they're from and they go in. And this is meant for very young children. And then my time with my grandma and my grandmas was they was always playing cards. And so we kind of wanted to put a card game in here. My grandma would always play Rummy, but stuff like that, but we can create like a rummy game. So we did a, a really simple, easy game called Goldfish. We don't have the translations in here yet, but this is kind of where the kids can come in and make a card game. And if they select the right one, they earn the feathers and whatnot, just kind of like that. And
to cross the bridge to help her get her favorite apple. And so the kids will have to come in and, and kind of spell the right word and help them to cross the Restricted to like any game kind of through all of our vocabulary throughout the game. So it includes like animals, um, numbers, foods. Try to quiz the kids. This is our, our cooking application. We wanted a way for our children to, to learn different colors. And so the kids come in here and we'll, they, when they are trying to click, they can kind of say the word. And they click the color palette and they start to hurt the word. And when they want to save it, they want to they display it in their, in their home world, so they just save it to their backpack. And so it'll be saved right there. And then again, you can always click into your home world, and you can do what you know, anytime you want. You can kind of come in here, put it on their wall, and display it. Just leave that going. So again, we're just trying to personalize this for the, the kids so they can get really attached to it. Um, the body game is going through an update right now. Um, we wanted to teach the children on body, random body parts. Um, so right now, kind of in a process of changing what we did. We did just have it for an informational one, like the math game. They would just come in here and click on the word. And it would kind of show them, you know, this, but now we're trying to change it into a reward game where they learn feathers. And we're going to change this out from just not only just the human kind of body parts, but we want to include like animals. We have uh, like a buffalo, fish, eagle, and we're just going to randomize when they come in here. And they would have to choose the right kind of, um, you know, whichever random way it chooses, like the circle, and it would reward. And so that this game's kind of, kind of going through a change right now in the beta, beta mode. We have a, another food game called Food Drop Game. And here again, it's kind of like a, a menu. You can kind of choose, the kids will just kind of choose which one. And so um, the foods will just kind of randomly drop from the sky and the kids will have to go and select the right ones, grandma and ask. Um, if they forgot it. She will kind of remind them which one. We, when we first 
first card, we have the background characters. So in our scenes, we'll, you'll see random background characters that will come about the place. So we're trying to make it feel more like a, they're not just alone. We want to build some characters into the game. So you'll see that in the background. And, um, and I think we have one more application, a mini application to go through. So we get a lot of foods, we get the animals. Um, I think our last one was uh, we built some shapes into into the game. This is kind of a fun one for the younger children. It's kind of like a Tetris game where they go in and Grandma will ask them to you know find some shapes and some colors. Shapes out to the kids. It's kind of fun for the kids. Again, they'll earn kind of for each match they make, they earn a little portion of the feather that they'll go in and start building up. They like this one because they can get a lot of feathers fast without really knowing the words, but so that's why it increases by a little bit. And so they'll just go in and kind of play the stars and match those uh, shapes. I don't want to spend too long on this part of the presentation, but I just wanted to walk through each of the application and kind of give a brief overview of what and how the games interact with the children and how to play them. Um, I will create another tutorial kind of just like this and put it out for the kids um, so they can start learning or the, the educators can start kind of, you know, showing the children in advance that they kind of would know what to do. But this is kind of the world we wanted to build the children. It was like we wanted to display of you know our four-legged friends. Um, they give them a, a kind of a place, a world that kind of reminds them of their ancestors and where they're from. Give give them a positive light, so some characters to look up to. And to when I grew up, I, I kind of liked I liked He-Man and, and GI Joe. And I, I kind of wanted to bring that kind of feel to our little children. Like something to attain to, and we're trying to build up these characters. So, in a good way, it's kind of like I grew up like Mario and all kinds of stuff, and, but I have the option of, of uh, liking somebody like me. So, and you know, with that, we we'll kind of end up this uh, kind of tutorial. Oh, and uh, at any time, the kids can go through their dictionary, and we kind of wanted to put this out there so the kids can go. Shama. Chasuke, Hebalaska, Kenja, Idumugalis words. Um, these kind of cover all of our vocabulary list in our games. Those are the animals, and then we have our foods over here. Numbers. We just have a, a long dictionary of a vocabulary to work, positive vocabulary now of course, um, that the kids can start learning. And, and like I said, this is kind of like built for like three year olds to about maybe seven, um, as far as like team play and stuff like that. So with that, I'll, I'm just going to close that out. I think I covered almost. So again, with that, you know, I'll close out with any questions, but like, we wanted to build an application for our children so they, you know, learn and be proud of, and we wanted to give our educators a way to, you know, get to our children outside of school, um, to build them an interactive application that they would love to play, but at the same time, they're, they're learning something. And that's kind of hard to do. As an educator. Um, any questions? Any, like I said, please feel free to come get a card. 
uh, it's free for the next month. It, you know, this application called Testify gives you a, a, a instant way to give feedback to me. Um, you'll be able to you know, write a paragraph, write 10 paragraphs you like, and just tell me what you like about the game, um, what you think it needs. We really want the feedback, so we, this month-long process of this open beta is meant for our Oyate. We wanted to build it, I wanted to build this for our Oyate, so please give us feedback. Um, tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. Um, and we got some free shirts for, for these. You can take a couple for your classroom. If you like, for, for the children that came today, please come get a shirt. Oh, in, in, in the test flight application, um, it gives you a place where you, you can select feedback. Well, I guess it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, I don't have a phone, but um, when you download it, it, it will let you install it through this application called Test Flight. And it's, the, it's kind of like the Apple Store. It is from Apple. It's called it. It's what Apple uses for its developers to get all of our applications for um, people to test. And, and right there, it says. Uh, send developer feedback and just put in your paragraph and it sends and goes right to you. That, thank you. How soon do you, how soon do you see this available? Oh, we're, we're going to put it into open beta mode. I want to hear feedback for at least a month and then we'll close that out. It will um, go through a design process of gathering all your feedback and trying to get whatever we can into the game. And we're planning to release this fully with, along with LNI in December, mm -hmm. December 14th this year. Um, hopefully it doesn't get canceled. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Uh, about how much will that cost? Um, we're planning to, to keep the cost low. Um, we're going to charge about $9.99 per, per install on the iPads. Um, this is to help us try to get off our feet. Um, Again, me and my brothers have been building this application for the past five five years, kind of just on our own. And we really didn't have any of our help. It was kind of me coming out of college and wanting to do this for our grandma um, and for our, for the children. Um, when I was young, my grandma used to tell us stories all the time, uh, and it connected us to our to our relative that I had never even met. Um, and she had a way of telling her stories where it was just so detailed where I would remember those stories for the rest of my life. And I would know my relatives that I've never met, like her cousins that, that passed away before my time. And it connected me to our relatives, so I thought it was really important for us as Lakota people, because we are poor people, to start um, somehow saving our, our stories from my elders. I really wanted to give our elders a platform to connect to their, to their youth. I think that's so important. And if uh, you go through the application, I put my head, head bluish uh, uh, namesake story into the game. And it, if you unlock it, you'll be able to hear our stories of, uh, of how Hallmark uh, got his name. And I think that's just key. Like if Ruby, uh, you see up in here, we have a couple characters, our four legged friends. I built uh, uh, a buffalo, and he's going to randomly come. Quiz, quiz the children. You didn't get to see it. Tony, uh, Gus played the Tony. I built the Tony as kind of a, like a villain that will come in and kind of swoop in and kind of quiz the kids and take away some feathers and trick them out with some feathers. We wanted to keep it really friendly and um, funny at the same time. I wish I could show you the Tony, but he just randomly pops up every now and then. So thank you for for coming. Please, if you have any questions, feel free, we'll be right up here. I would love to answer your questions. And again, please take back some cards to some children, let them download it, teach some free quiz. Thank you. Do you see the, um, being able to provide the Lakota and Nakota dialects there as well, or is that something that's going to be done down the road? Yeah, we, we would love to, to add that. Right now, I think the biggest um, bottleneck that we we face so far is getting the audio bills recorded and translated. And so we're hoping with, with the, the release um, to the OIA tape that it, it's already giving us feedback in, in 
and start seeing that this game is kind of for our children and you guys can kind of mold that. You know, it's not, I'm not building this application for, for me, I'm building it for the, the children and for you. So please use this as a tool. We can update some of these mini games with categories. So we wanted to, so we have our arrow game coming with animals, we kind of wanted to bring in insects and stuff like that. For educators, if you guys have any kind of apps or anything like that, we can definitely work with you. We plan on, when we release this, keeping this update at least once or twice a year. So, or during the school year, so the educators can point to this application and say, hey, you know, guys, we'll play that for a little bit. You know, we'll kind of teach them, you know, different categories. And so when they get learned enough animals, it will change like, in a semester and update to so it, like insects or something like that. That's kind of the goal behind that. It's kind of one of really easy to switch out, you know, different kind of kids. So relatives, uh, you saw the presentation and perhaps uh, somewhere in the future you can utilize this. He's talking about not only uh, revitalizing and, and, and helping us uh, save our languages, not only the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota dialect, but also the Ramkota dialect. I heard all of you guys speaking on three. That Ramkota stuff. So, I see a good future, future of this, and uh, so uh, we strongly need your support. And uh, you know, put some, uh, whatever you feel. And I know it's kind of hard to speak up. Is, is there anybody that would like to say something that we could uh, pull you out from the crowd and give you the mic to do a song or something? You know, you got to just play that. Thinking about what we used to discuss, it really kind of. Uh, I hope you guys really keep going. Uh, I always uh, listen to young people's dreams because they're important too. So that dream that you have, and uh, don't let any of those dream killers get to you. Keep going. And, and you're going to develop something that our children are going to want to see and do. And our, even our older ones, our, our teenagers, are going to, instead of trying to compete with that, those things, you're going to balance that. And I think that's what we want to do, not to compete with the Washita world, but to balance that. To teach them that 
They don't have to live in two worlds. They can be still a Kota and do the things out there. Everywhere in the world they do that. The Japanese do that, the Chinese. You know, they don't live in two worlds. They, they, they're still Chinese, but they can still be out here doing the things that everybody else in the world is doing. So I just want to encourage you guys. Mustela. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming. And like I said, if you have any personal questions or any kind of questions up here, we'll be here for you know the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, we'll be right outside too as well. Um, please come get some some shirts for, for our youth. And we just like I said, we really want to build this application for our youth and kind of give them something to look into. Thank you for showing up, Mark. Thank you.